So your beer is at final gravity, but how do you know if it's actually ready or not? How do you know if you need to wait one day, two days, three days, five days, or even 15 days? Uh, well, a uh, simple way of figuring that out pretty quickly actually is to do what's called a VDK test. Uh, so VDK stands for vicinal diketones. So what you're doing is primarily testing for uh, diacetyl. Um, so what you'll need is a couple of heat safe sample vessels. This can be uh, mason jars or cups, just something that um, won't basically blow up. Uh, a coffee filter, a uh, thermometer, a pot, uh, something you do an ice bath in, uh, though that's optional, um, and some plastic wrap. So to do the test, you'll need a small sample of whatever you're fermenting. Um, I pull a, a larger sample because I'm going to do a pH and gravity reading at the same time. But you might pull something like, say, 200 milliliters. Uh, it doesn't take very much. Uh, keep in mind, you will need to split it, so you need enough to basically fit a fair portion of whatever two vessels you're putting it in. All right, so go ahead and give it a swirl. And uh, what you're looking for on the nose is a butterscotch aroma. At least that's what I get. Uh, some people do get the, the, the butter uh, popcorn. Um, I get the butter popcorn more on the taste. Um, and it's basically at the end of the taste as the beer is, is um, basically evaporating off of your tongue. Real, real strong butter to popcorn. Uh, so anyways, if you pick up um, something on either of those, uh, then you don't need to worry about continuing um, this test because, well, it's, it's already a positive hit. So since we passed our cold test, we move on to the heated sample. Uh, since the beer will be basically reaching 150 degrees, um, we want to make sure we get all of our yeast out of there as possible. Um, at that temperature, um, basically, we're definitely thermally shocking the yeast, and uh, they would leach uh, essentially byproducts back into the beer, and that can give you a false positive. So a simple coffee filter um, makes it really easy, uh, gets most of it out there. You'll see the color difference um, when it's done filtering. Uh, this filtering process does uh, take a while to do, especially with um, uh, beers with a lot more protein or hops or such in them. Uh, this one here should take probably about uh, 10 or 15 minutes. Um, what I do is uh, pour in um, basically half of whatever my uh, uh, total sampling was, so in this case 200 milliliters, and uh, just let it uh, kind of drip away for, for a while while I'm doing other stuff. And there we go. Uh, once it's done filtering, just uh, go ahead and remove it. And um, you can really see the difference between the two there. Uh, one's very, very turbid uh, on the left there. Um, so it really does pull out a lot of yeast. There's still some yeast in there, but not enough to, um, to create the uh, false positive. So now we heat it up. But before we do that, uh, make sure you cover your sample with some plastic wrap. Uh, if you don't, um, basically any of the aromas that we're looking for might actually evaporate out. Just go ahead and turn your heat on, and uh, make sure that you put something in the bottom of the, the kettle so your flask or vessel isn't sitting directly against the burner. Um, just helps uh, moderate that heat a little bit better. Uh, and what you want to do is heat up the uh, water to um, somewhere between 140 and 150 degrees. Uh, if you get it to 150 degrees, uh, what you want to do is keep it there for about 10 minutes. If it's a little cooler, just give it a, a couple extra minutes to um, uh, make sure that those reactions are all happening. Uh, while it's heating up, it's a good time to actually go ahead and make your ice bath. Um, I like to do an ice bath just because it's a whole lot faster. Uh, you can cool a sample down in, I don't know, a couple of minutes maybe, uh, compared to the freezer where uh, usually I actually forget about it and, and um, have to do the whole thing all over again. And what you're looking to do is basically cool the sample down to somewhere around ambient temperature, which is typically about 68 degrees. So uh, anyways, it's just been 10 minutes. Um, put my sample in the uh, ice bath, and um, I'll have it ready in just a minute here. All right, we're seconds away from telling if the beer is ready or not. So uh, go ahead and take it out and uh, remove the plastic wrap on top and give it a smell and see what you think. Again, if, if there's any sort of... Um, uh, uh, sweetness again. I, I describe it as a, a butterscotch. Uh, it's it's not like a, a, a caramel kind of a sweetness that you'd get from um, obviously like a, a caramel or crystal malt. Um, it's just a little different. Um, if if you're ever wondering what it smells like, take a fermentation on like day three and uh, give it a good whiff, or even just do this test, and and you'll definitely get the smell. Um, but uh, if you're 
at all unsure, uh, use the control is to kind of reset your palette uh, or the cold sample. Uh, and, and if you're, you're picking up something, um, it's always good to give it another day or two. Uh, it's better safe than sorry because, you know, it will essentially come out uh, as time it progresses, especially depending on uh, the level of oxidation in the beer. All right, that's awesome. So you've just completed your first VDK test. Congratulations. Uh, so the question is, what do you do next? Well, it kind of depends on what kind of beer you're making. Um, if you're doing any sort of traditions or even dry hopping, what you want to do is uh, uh, ideally move that vessel or move that to a secondary vessel. Um, just to try and get some of the yeast out of there, some of the um, uh, uh, proteins and sediment. Uh, if you're not and uh, you're bottling, uh, if you can do a soft crash, that's going to significantly speed up this process. Uh, soft crash is basically bringing the temperature down to... Uh, like low 60s, high 50s-ish, um, and what that's going to do is cause the majority of the yeast and um, uh, proteins and such to flocculate out uh, and um, clear up the beer. Uh, don't worry, there will still be plenty of yeast in there to carbonate it, um, so, uh, so it's not really too much of an issue. If you're uh, kegging, then you go and crash this beer down, try and get it as cold as possible. Ideally, somewhere around, uh, uh, you know, the closer to freezing, uh, the faster uh, your clarification happens and the faster your carbonation happens as well. So, um, crash it down, uh, clarify it, uh, carb it up, and um, yeah, man, you're, you're pretty much ready to go. So, uh, if you did happen to fail that test or you're just on the fence, um, there's a couple things you can do to, to kind of speed up that process. Uh, first of all, um, it, it, reactions are all, all temperature-based, um, and yeast is, is happier the, the warmer it gets, uh, to an extent. Um, ideally, if you've got any sort of temperature control uh, or, or atmosphere control, what you'll do is move it into a slightly warmer room. Um, what you're looking to do is get that beer up to somewhere around 70. Um, if you've got a, a heating belt or something, that would be totally ideal um, just to get that temperature up for a couple of days. Uh, you're, you're, you've made it through the, uh, the early stages of fermentation, so at this point you're not going to really damage the beer um, with, uh, with too many esters or phenols by getting that temperature up. Uh, if you do have temperature control and you've already bumped up your temperature a couple degrees, um, uh, usually I'll start like 68 and on day uh, uh, 3 or 4 um, I'll bump it up just a couple of degrees from 68 to like 70 or 71. Uh, if you've already done that, uh, again, you know, the, the best thing you can do is just, again, give it more time. Uh, different yeast strains react differently. Some uh, are really fantastic at um, uh, a super fast cleanup and, and minimal um, diacetyl. Uh, others take a little bit of time. So the more you get to know the yeast, the, the better and the easier this, this whole process is going to be. Uh, thanks, guys, for watching this video. I really appreciate uh, the support that you've given me on Instagram. Um, I'm going to be coming out with uh, other little simple stuff like this and um, some brew days and, and some other fun stuff. So, anyways, uh, cheers, have a homebrew, and uh, we'll see you guys in the next one.